Flee! Flee for your lives! Or don't, because we've got siege weapons to protect us against the incoming menace. Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Prelaw's Blocky Siege mod. One that will help you defend yourself, or maybe even attack others, with new siege weapons. But as you may already know, I am currently in creative. Yes, I will be showing you a little bit about this mod and how it offers some really cool items that you can use in your world uh, and the pluses and minuses of each of them. To start with, though, we're not going to go with one of those. We're going to go with one of these. It's a simple reinforced door. Won't work unless, of course, you have some kind of option to open it with buttons. Just, so it's basically a retextured iron door, but it just looks a little bit more appropriate uh, compared to some of the other ones. So you can use it for an exterior wall or something, and it doesn't have to look quite so ugly like the uh, vanilla style. That aside, we're going to focus on a bunch of these. And yes, there is a current raid effect at the top. I accidentally triggered one, but you know what? It's appropriate for the situation. We've got a lot of targets out beyond the walls of this city. And we're going to introduce to you a few of the different items. There are two main weapons in this mod. One is a cannon, which is made with a whole lot of iron surrounding a blast furnace. On top of that, we've got a mortar, which uses a little bit less iron and doesn't necessarily have as much reach as the cannon, but it does have a much greater arch that you can fire with. And each of them have different uh, ammunition that you can use. In this case, we've got some cannonballs and some gun barrel uh, or gunpowder barrels that you can fire off with your regular cannons. And then, of course, your mortar will accept molten shells and mortar shells. Both of those are quite well, all of them are quite devastating, to be honest. Each of these will have their pluses and minuses, uh, depending upon how they function. Let's start off with one of these a regular old cannon. And inside you'll have some kind of interface. You've got this little like fire icon. You can put things like cannonballs in here. And then you can put things like uh, gunpowder in this area here. Let's, let's just put in one little tiny piece of gunpowder. And we've got 50 cannonballs, but it's not going to shoot 50 of them at a time. It never shoots more than one of the ammunition. But you do have to have gunpowder as like the charge for any of these things. And you'll notice it only fills it up a little bit. You can actually put in there up to four for four different increments on the range. And I happen to have it so that these guys are all lined up conveniently where these little stone pieces are. Now, none of these are highly destructive. They will do some destruction to fragile blocks. For example, ice and glass may break accordingly to with some of the ammunition on this, but otherwise most of the stuff will just be ignored and, and not damaged at all but there may be some remnants of things left over. We'll get into that in time. Now these cannons, once they're loaded up with any number of different kinds of uh, gunpowders, and yes, you can actually put in huge amounts in here, but then you're only going to be firing maximum uh, gunpowder amounts, and you're going to be firing at maximum range every time. Things you're going to want to be aware of, they react to uh, redstone controls or triggers or things of that nature. You can also just click on it with a flint and steel. And that will also activate this just the same. And if you so desire, you can also put on there like a, a, a redstone comparator and it will have differing amounts of uh, the results depending upon how full these two slots are on there. And on top of that, you can also put a hopper in on this thing and it will feed the slots in here. But just be aware that most of the time uh, you're going to be feeding the cannonball slot first. So once that's full, then you're going to want to have your gunpowder and you're going to want to make sure that you have it arranged appropriately. If you're always firing at maximum range, for instance, you'll be using four gunpowder per shot of cannonball, which means that you'll need four stacks of gunpowder to launch an entire stack of cannonballs over time. But that that's a lot of cannonballs. So let's actually use this. Now, I'm going to start off with just flint and steel. And you hear the little sizzle. Next thing you know, it shoots and a little tiny cannonball comes out. It, it's not really that impressive. You, you saw that there was like one damage done there. I can shoot it again. Not much going on. There we go. It did a little bit of damage in an area. It And it's random how it actually hits. Now, right now, I've got it aiming right here at that guy's feet, but it doesn't mean it's going to land exactly there. It could land in a, a small radius around that. Same thing with any of these weapons. They aren't exact, but you get a basic idea of where they can fire. 
Now going in this one, we've got some gunpowder. Let's do one gunpowder and a gunpowder barrel. Just so you're aware, the gunpowder barrel is just a bunch of planks wrapped around some TNT. And the cannonball, you get four of them from a whole bunch of iron. But these can go quite farther than the other one, and they may do some more piercing damage. But the gunpowder barrel, uh, the, this this is this one's probably my favorite of the different cannon ones because it does like an area effect and can be quite effective. But again, you're using up even more of your valuable gunpowder with the TNT, which you need to fire these things to begin with. So it's not exactly the easiest resource to come by. Now, if I put in a couple gunpowder on here and a couple gunpowder on here, then I press this button between them. It will then launch both of them simultaneously a further distance than before. And you'll notice that it actually went out to the second marker instead of the first one. And as before, if I add in up to three gunpowder and launch it, then they should go out even further to that Ravager that we've got further out. And you'll notice that it actually put a hole in the uh, ice over there. That's because, like I said, it actually will damage fragile blocks, but it won't damage uh, things like dirt or uh, stone or whatnot. And you also notice that it didn't exactly hit in the middle of that block. It actually hit off to the side. Like I said, it does have a little bit of variance to it. Just dropping in the whole stack or just having four of the uh, gunpowder in there should suffice for it to go maximum range. But you'll notice it didn't actually hit the Ravager farthest out there because it was in the way. So this is the weakness of the cannon is that it only hits those at the uh, at the front. So you'd have to launch again in order to hit the one in the very back. Of course, it does quite a serious amount of damage on these targets. You notice that Ravager died on the original hit and these are just fun to launch. They do have a drop over time, so they will arc slightly, just not as uh, much as the mortar will. That it also makes a really uh, lovely sound when those things are fired. So let's go over here to the mortar. This one here shoots in a different way. It launches one projectile out at a good distance, depending upon how it's fired. Now I've got mortar shells in here which kind of do like a 3x3 three three area damage and if I put just one in here we'll see how good or bad it may fare targeting at this group here. No guarantee it's actually <laughs> going to land exactly where it needs to but you notice there it killed a good chunk of those guys with a massive amount of damage. It also has a very satisfying whistle sound Normally when that is uh, firing and falling down uh, in a downward angle, it's much better when you go at farther distances. So for example, let's do a couple gunpowder, but in this case we're going to do molten shells instead of the mortar shells. Which, the mortar shells by the way are cannonballs surrounded by even more iron because it does even more damage in a larger area. And the molten shells, they are mortar shells surrounded by magma blocks because they last for a considerable amount of time. Launching this at team two, we should see a different reaction. You'll notice a lot of fire and explosives seems to happen over there. Let's get a little closer of a look. You'll notice that there are these magma carpets kind of floating around here. It's because they're not very good in water, but if there was a whole bunch of land, for it to land on, then you might see a different effect. And you'll notice that there is a whole bunch of this leftover magma carpet on the ground. You can't craft this stuff, it has to be fired from a mortar for it to actually land in place, but it will stay there for a good portion of almost an entire day, and it will damage mobs that are walking over it. So by dropping something like a chicken on here, you notice that it just pretty much takes some damage almost immediately and then dies. Uh, it's pretty much the same with anything else that might cross over it. But if you notice here, we've got a Ravager with 47 health. We've got a Ravager with 20 health. This one was hit earlier by one of those large shells. Putting in one of these mortar shells with a range of three, so it should hit the one that has 47 health. Launching this, we should see a considerable damage drop. <laughs> the sound effects are quite lovely, and you'll notice that it's down into the regular heart range. And it does a considerable amount of damage. It's nothing that is, you know, you, you actually can make a 
good amount of damage with the mortar shell as well that uses the uh, the magma attack and hit both of them with such damage that it may end up killing them both or just getting really close. That one landed kind of in between. Now besides being able to place these down in world and if you have some you can just stack them up like so and it's pretty darn cool that you can just make this a little bit more aesthetic as well as have it be functional. Now it might not have the huge range that one might want, but it definitely has a lot of options for you to choose from and it's still under development. And even more impressive is that it's a M Creator production. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more Bit by Bits, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Please stop by on Twitch, give us a follow there because we stream regularly. And until next time folks, I'll see ya.